to this one. This is Fiend and Yuse versus Wes and Vemtankilo. We are getting some interesting legend choices here. Yuse has now moved off as they start this team combo. It gets a little bit interrupted, but they were able to add 50 plus damage on both Yuse and Fiend. Great start for Wes and Vemtankilo. Yeah, I mean, that's the type of start you definitely want to see. You know, almost getting a full stock, right? We've got to finish that sentence. Getting that stock off of Fiend, but Fiend. Still living to see another day. However, Wes may not be on the same. Oh, nice. Good save there from Fiend. Are they both going to be able to get back, though? Kind of stuck here. Wes, use. Why? He doesn't make oh, it he back, can't too. save either. Fiend was just sitting there in sweat beads, and Yuse had the room, but I think he was just so worried about how quickly Rayman can get over and cover the edge, whether it's with a down stick like we saw. These double axes are coming out. They're doing huge work here. We saw Wes and Vim Tankilo talk about it after their victory at Spring Doubles Championship with this comp right here, this double Rayman. Oh, man, it is not looking good again for Fiend. He's about to be off of his second stock already. It's like they stopped even looking at Yuse just to add up all this damage to Fiend right now. And, oh, okay, hold on. Might be able to turn this around into something. They need to get these stocks off. They want any chance. No chance right there. Vim going to find the side air out there and putting Fiend down to his last stock already. Yeah, Fiend's going to have to figure something different out in game two. Of course, all is not lost. One, this is only game one. Two, there's still runway left in this game. Mm -hmm. It is three stocks to six, which is a very tough spot for the red team. But there's still plenty of time to like learn, absorb more that you can so that Fiend doesn't go down two stocks so early in the game. We're not even a minute and a half in, and Fiend is already in yellow on final stocks. Wes finally loses his first one. That's a great start to try and bring this back. Get a little bit of momentum. They get the full team wipe there with the KO on Vim 10 Kilo as well. Yeah, interesting too. I feel like if Vim got hit with that down light, then it sent him pretty power up, but I guess he just didn't, you know, didn't realize how many resources he did or did not have. So was not able to uh, touch the stage, get back, or maybe just gave the stock up. It was pretty unhealthy. You know, just started off fresh. You guys got still got a pretty good lead. Uh, assuming they can get one of these stocks or this stock off of Fiend and turn it into a 2v1, this has become a way easier game for them. And they're looking, Fiend getting passed off the stage right here. Whoa, I don't know what that was about, but. Either way, Fiend still living just barely, though. I think a side air could do it enough. Oh, great interrupt there from Fiend with the neutral light on the side signature that was about to come out. And Fiend has to chill out just a little bit. I mean, definitely has to chill now. He has to play a little, uh, a nice little game of cat and mouse. He's running away, trying his best, but he got shark and hawk down right there and just left. He's like, you know what? It's good. I don't even need to try right here. I think we got some good data, though. Again, it is three out of five sets, so they do have at least a game that, you know, to mess around with, maybe get some data, and now turn this into a 3-1 situation if they can pick it up. Now keep in mind, this is Wes and Vim Tankilo coming out with the gold medal like just a little bit over a month ago, maybe a month and a half from the Spring Doubles Championship, showing that they are one of the, if not the top team, especially now that Kaina and Lores have moved down into the elimination side of things. Could it be Wes and Vim Tankilo? Are they the biggest hope from Brazil to finally get their 2v2 victory? That would be kind of uh, kind of wild uh, here, but I think we all we all know use mostly for his like singles play, so it is kind of interesting to see him like do a lot more here on the double side of things. But I think uh, just overall in that last match, they, I felt like they got overwhelmed so quickly and they just could not dig yeah. their way out of that uh, that rut. So you know sometimes I like the I like seeing you know let me not waste too much brain power on this two v one where we could just do the next game. Obviously that first game escaped us pretty uh, easily, but a couple of character swaps here. It looks like we're going uh, back to our tried and trues right there. I see a Jay on out and a Hattori Three, out. Two, yeah, one, we're seeing four. this is this is like the OG picks for them, even though Jay on is not like a super old legend. It's like one of the OG picks for use. Of course, the legend that he won the 1v1 World Championship with showed everybody the power of Great Sword. Oh my gosh, as Fiend is just getting bodied here. And even with those giant hitboxes that Great Sword has, Yuse wasn't able to interrupt like any of that. Then Fiend is about to lose his stock. I think that's one of the weaknesses too of the Green Sword. While it does have some very big hitboxes, uh, you know, more, it's mostly known for its ground game. So once you start getting air combo like that, it can become an issue. And well, that's definitely an issue. Oh You're comboing my gosh. the wrong person, you taking out Fiend and then putting himself in that 2v1 situation to get taken out immediately after that. Wes and Vim looking like a well oiled machine right now in this uh, second game. Now they do have Wes reasonably deep in the red. We are on Demon Island, so we'll see if they can find some KOs with those further away uh, knockout boxes, those glass zones there. You tried it with that side signature right off the edge of the stage with them. It was much too low to get hit by. A little bit of team damage coming out between the two. The red team can't really afford that at this point. Wes is still going to get back, even after getting hit by Vim Tankilo. 
and they have the 2v1 situation here. Are they even going to need it? Fiend with the neutral signature. Hail Mary attempt does not make a connection, ends up falling, and we are five stocks to two. All of the information gathering that happened for the red team in game one is like null and void here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like whatever information they got, it was it was false information, bro. They got, they got led astray. <laughs> it was they, a disinformation. Yeah, it was disinformation. Coming <laughs> from Wesson, <laughs> Oh, man, because they're oh, looking no. so clean here. Use, even though Fiend was getting bullied out of this game very early on, Hughes is actually looking like the one who's going to lose that final stock first. We'll see if they can clean him up here. And I think, I think, I mean, it's still death wall. I felt like I was going to say it was still possible, but it would have been taking a lot of movement and a lot of safe gameplay there from Hughes, who was immediately taken out before I even got a chance to finish that sentence. A four stock for the blue team. A record time on that game, too. That was super quick. I mean, there's got to be a light. There's got to be a, maybe a swap, another thought process going on. Maybe someone has, needs to take lead, take point, something like that. Some, something needs to change here because these games are only getting worse and worse. The first one was relatively closer than that. This one was an absolute wash. Yeah, so far in this set, Wes and Vim are looking all but unstoppable here. Mm -hmm. their, their coverage with the double axe, we haven't even hardly seen like that much gauntlet gameplay coming out from them whatsoever. We can see a little bit of a breakdown of the damage here between the two, like 859 to 428. Fiendin used it less than half of the damage. No, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's it's a I little less. I don't know. I can't do math right now. Three, oh, whatever. Two, no, they did, they one, did singles roll. damage. That's what they did. Yeah. Bro. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they did singles damage to two people, and that's you know that's meaning you know, that's not doing uh, yeah, quite a bit. So twenty eight times two is eight fifty six. It's eight fifty nine. So yes. Oh, right there. I shouldn't second second guess myself anymore. You know what? Yeah, believe. Be confident. Just, just believe. Ooh, like Ben was believing in that neutral signature to make a connection there. Maybe send over to the blast zone, even though his opponents were both in yellow. Much better start here, though. Nobody getting caught in a 2v1 combo. Mm. And that's, I mean, that's definitely, uh, yeah, I just said a way better start for him. You know, nobody getting absolutely bodied here. Fiend, though. This is scary. One more time. Almost that was getting put so down. close. I cannot believe he actually was able to touch the wall and also avoid that down sig with how small this wall is and how big that down sig uh, swings down. But luckily, let's see another day on this first stock. It's used up way more hurt than Fiend, though, so that would have been a, a, de a huge detriment to the team if he had lost that stock that early. Whatever they change, they're doing a much better job this game. Of course, they got the first stock. They're a little bit behind in damage compared to, like, West. They're both in around KO damage, especially uh, if the blue team has axes in their hands, which West does not at this moment. He might just be sitting on these gauntlets uh, when, until he gets knocked out. Of course, he has a signature kit. We saw a lot more of that in game one. Ooh, that's not enough to do it. Right, West, yeah, still a nice unarmed, though. He does have to do a little chase down, still living. Barely. Trying to fight his way down. A nice save. It was a it save. Was, it actually was technically a save. <laughs> That's wild. So much damage has been added up. There are hardly any color changes left on that health bar. They finally got that. They were doing a great job of adding up damage on Sim Tank. Kilo, though, using Fiender in a very solid spot right now. Even if Muse loses his stock, he's only on second. They can focus on Ben. If Fiend cannot get caught here, you saw him turn around trying to target switch with GCD light. And, that, and it worked out too. He actually was able to avoid getting a combo there. Uh, didn't really take, I think he might have taken one hit, which is major, as he was definitely already sandwiched and put in a position uh, that he had to fight his way out of. Did a good job of it. Now he's putting their team back up in the league. The fiend and used actually get themselves a game on the board. Our weapon, Vim Tempilo, going to go ahead and put this thing back together and try to close it out. 3 0. -oh. Fiend, though, getting a ground pound on the wrong person yet again. There's been a lot of team damage uh, between you and Fiend for sure. I need to clean that up just a little bit. They still have the lead, so not the worst thing in the world, but you know, as the set progresses, that could definitely spell imminent doom for them. Nice air. Uh oh. Oh, I thought the bottom side of that was going to hit Fiend and he was going to lose that stock. It's now four stocks to two. Let's see if Fiend can get back here. Not in sweat beads yet. Ooh. Now he is, and he still has the dodge. He saved that one as late as he possibly could. I was expecting almost a ground pound to come out there. That would have been like the perfect punish, but the neutral air was a great follow up as well from Fiend. Not only put out a little bit of damage, also saved him and was the follow up off his teammate. Oh, Yuse was almost oh. ready for that recovery, too. They're definitely coming alive this game. There's that GC side signature coming out from West. Yuse actually hitting the, uh, the down air over on the wall. I thought he was just going to land on the main platform, but no, he knew Fiend was going to be spawning back in. Didn't feel in danger at all. Okay, I was like, maybe yeah, West is just getting poked out. He took so much damage just trying to get that back to the stage between those two large down airs of both the Spear and the Great Sword. And by the time he finally got there, yeah, the damage added up. Just needed a quick uh, recovery. And yeah, that was, that, that was the justice we kind of needed to see in that second game. But they just were able to do it, able to stop the bleeding, make sure this didn't turn into a 3-0 situation. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the, the momentum also has to kind of be on their side too. 
Um, after going down in a four stock fashion and then being able to like answer back like that, you gotta feel a little good. Three, two, one. Yeah, it was especially the great sword from Yuse that just completely did a 180 from the previous game. Like that was the weapon that he was relying on in the previous games, even when he was doing like low damage. He was usually doing triple of the damage that he was doing on sword. Here he did 647 on the great sword compared to 48 on the sword. So he was finally getting that momentum on his side, finally understanding how to play the great sword against specifically this team, how to space out the sideline. Of course, his offensive sidelight and, of course, the like defensive sidelight punish from Nikilo or Wes's axe. So really just playing a lot better here. Great spot dodge there. He hasn't been hit. I mean, he's the least damaged this entire game. Wes and Vim are both red. Oh. Okay. Pushed him off that stage yet again. I like that Wes putting up a nice little wall, not allowing them to go over there and try to get an edge guard. Free entry back to the stage for Vim. But now, still, you know, kind of uh, stuck, stuck over here to the side regardless. Does fight his way back in this time around. The recovery, scooping him up from the ground, though, and going to take that stock. Good stuff, man. Again, Hughes and Fiend have definitely uh, picked it all the way up. I think maybe that game that they lost was not just readjusting to their characters, but now they seem to be kind of locked in. And we're seeing more vertical KOs with Yuzu's Greatsword, like KOs off the top rather than the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, like, Fiend can't do as easily, especially if we're not talking about signatures. If he's doing D-Light Recovery on Fortress of Lions, like, you need to do a lot of damage if you're doing that with Sword or even with Spear at that point. So the fact that Yuzu is able to get these juggles, like, to end last game was that back-to-back -back neutral air. This game, we've already seen him pick up a recovery. So those vertical KOs off the top, Yuzu is able to do that with specifically the Greatsword, and that's an area where Fiend's character just needs a little bit of help. Fiend, though, right now, no, or like, finally get, losing that stock after about a uh, minute and a half, really. I mean, he was really uh, living on that first stock for quite some time. Uh, and he's already got really good damage here onto them. West so far, and, and he was pretty tied on the damage. This definitely could turn around with one little team interaction, one little team combo interaction if they can, uh, anybody can find it. As of right now, though, it definitely has been a pretty slow development neutral between them. Get a little, get a little chaotic right there. Everybody getting hit. Uh oh just over two minutes into this game, and Vem is the most damaged, but I don't think he's really in KO damage yet, unless he gets hit by something goofy. Maybe he's just gonna follow him up here. Oh, the GCD light is enough to KO him. I'm so surprised. Gravity cancel that, of course, gives you the finisher right away. That's why you saw the color change there. That, that had to be, like, just past the blast zone, too. I mean, as you say, he did not have... He wasn't crazily hurt. He was hurt enough to, you know, maybe lose to a SIG at the side, but was not expecting the down uh, light to do it off of that. Either way, it's still looking uh, good for Wes and Fiend yet again. Wow. Using Fiend, but yeah, Wes gonna lose that stock. And them already hurt, trying to fight his way back to the stage. Man to do, okay, even off the backside of that recovery, uh, still gets the stock too. And look at that even game just uh, out of nowhere. That almost hurts a little bit after that KO that you just got where, I can't remember whether it was Wes or Vim came in with the GC side signature, hit his teammate, was going to do the big force stump at the end, but it was the Dare Nair, which not only interrupted the move, saved his teammate, but also KO'd his opponent with a true combo that he had to aim, given like the larger hitbox of a neutral air, to not hit his teammate in the exact same thing. Very impressive spacing from Yuz on that. It's got to be really tough for them. I mean, they're still definitely in the lead now, but it was, uh, it, it would hurt me in that moment to do something so well, see it equalize, but they held on Yuz and Fiend now taking this one to game five against Wes and Vim Tanquilo. And, and even though the games have not been as dominant, the fact is they're still win. So yeah, maybe they're not getting four stocks or whatever, but they, what they are ending with are are in W's. Like, I mean, it may be, you know, one stock left, but it's like one stock, and it's pretty healthy on those stocks, too. So it seems like the game is only getting more and more in their favor. And so now it's really up to them, Tanquilo, uh, and, and, and teammate to finally figure out what they need to do to get this W and kind of seal the deal. I mean, you guys had two solid first games, and then after that, it's just really been uh, all over to uh, use and Fiend. So, can Vim and Wes okay. both it out here, or use and Fiend gonna complete the reverse 3 0? Bit of a vintage, more vintage team comp coming out here, including the Olgram coming out from Vem Tankilo. Wes is gonna be still on the Rayman. Definitely like his most popular legend in twos as of late. Of course, a very meta legend with the axe and the gongs and the sick kit and everything. Oh, dude, Vim is already getting handled, and like Wes also is too. He's about midway through orange. He has to be very careful. Yeah, this is. 
I mean, Vim so far is in the deepest right now, West, because of the fact that Vim has to play so patient, you know, Haitian and so cautious, will start to eat up a lot of damage too. So they're able to get that stock off of Vim. West already hurt. So he's got to, like, kind of play it back a little bit. And if he wants to reserve, couldn't do it long enough. But two stocks already gone for a minute's pass. Not any type of damage here on Vim. Use also, you know, barely hurt. This is not the start that West and uh, Vim needed. And one of the things that Red Team is doing really well, and I, I don't know how Blue Team can, like, fix this, but it's they're, they're getting the KOs like reasonably staggered to where like they'll knock out Wes and then they'll knock out Fiend or they'll, they'll knock out them and then all of a sudden while one of them is respawning they do 50 damage on the other. Mm -hmm. It's not 100 damage, it's not 150, it's not straight to a KO, but it's still 50 damage that they add up while the other one is respawning while they have that main advantage. They've been able to capitalize on that so much compared to the blue team. Yeah, I mean just being damaged in twos right now, being damaged is definitely going to affect the way, like how risky you're willing to be or you know how out there you're willing to go for certain things uh, for risk of, you know, missing and just getting, you know, side aired out of nowhere. Now you're off the stock. Your teammate's there in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, as we're seeing right now, that one-on-one -on -one situation led into another stock take. Three stocks, two stocks here. Now for us, uh, you know, two stocks each for the red team. Four stocks for two, and it's already looking a little scary. Finn, Finn though, is hurting. And if they can manage to find a way to get some damage on the Fiend, that would be great. But Fiend's elusiveness so far has been uh, top-notch throughout this uh, second half of the set. There's two piece. He even found the third with the down air. Another two piece onto Vim. Turning over to West. They almost turned that one into a 2v1. Feed chasing into the air. Not enough to KO just yet. Oh. Vim 10 kilo has been taken out. And West is looking at four stocks of use and feed. Okay, yeah, West has definitely been trying to throw out some side six. They have not worked out for him too much. He finally got one hit right there, but oh, okay. I'm surprised he made it back. They are definitely covering a lot of area, but he was able to, uh, you know, get the weave his way through. Yeah, there, there were like very this, few safe zones there for him to go to, but he was able to navigate. Sidelight sending him over to the edge. He still has a weapon, something that Yuz cannot claim just yet until right now. Picking up the sword, went for the down air. West was too high. There's the side air, but Yuz cleans it up. Game one was looking so rough, TK. Game two was looking even rougher, TK. And they were able to turn it around with the legends that we really know them for. Of course, Fiend on the Hattori that we've seen him play for uh, probably going on eight or nine years now.